Okay, so, uh, Jesus Christ, Zombie Killer, Book of John. That is the most colons I've seen in a title since Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. But, I mean, the title says it all. <laughs> this, you already know what this book is about. Lázaro, levántate y anda. ¡Viva Jesús! Jesús, has hecho un milagro. Muchas gracias. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So, I think you already know whether or not this book is going to appeal to you. It takes place 2,000 years ago in Judea, while well, it's part of the Roman Empire, and a necromancer raises some zombies, and then a group of Jewish folks needs to kill all the zombies, and one of them is Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. He is not the main character. The main character is actually John, who I believe is supposed to be John the Apostle from the Bible, and because, you know, he's friends with Jesus, he hangs out in that area, yada yada. But, yeah, just based on that, I think you already know if this book appeals to you or not. You're, you're gonna either hear that and think, well, that sounds like fun, let's check it out, or you're gonna hear it and think, that sounds really, really stupid, I'm staying far away from it. All that said, I do still want to go into a little more detail with a review here, you know, just go into critique about things it does well, things it does poorly, because this, this story is a bit more serious than I first thought, you know, this isn't like a screwball comedy or anything, it does treat itself pretty serious, kind of like a Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, if you ever read that, you know, based on the title it sounds really stupid and silly, and it, it kind of is, but it treats itself uh, pretty seriously, and it works well in that regard, whereas Jesus Christ Zombie Killer kinda does, uh, like there are a few goofy bits, but for the most part it is treating itself as a serious story, and so I feel it deserves real critique. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail because I think you already know more or less what happens in this story. Uh, like, you know, zombies come, humans fight them, people die along the way, it's super sad and stuff. I'm not gonna go into super spoilers, but you get the gist of it. If you know anything about zombie stories, you know that. And I will also briefly mention that if you're a hardcore Christian, this may offend you because Jesus is not the Messiah here. Uh, if you're not a hardcore Christian, you'd probably be okay with that, but just felt the need to bring it up. Um, basically, the first issue I have is that this book starts with an extended prologue. So we have a character named Herodias, who is a little girl, and her parents drag her off to a temple of Morda, who is the god of death, and they're gonna try and sacrifice her to bring her brother back to life, but the priestesses of Morda stop them, and then take her away, and they raise her to become a priestess slash necromancer, and she, uh, that's how she learns how, how to use her powers and stuff. And I say that, and I call it a prologue, and you might think, okay, that's like, 10 pages or 15 pages and then it's over, which is what I thought it would be too, but it actually keeps going for a while and winds up being like 40 pages before this bit's over, uh, because we also cover uh, Herodias growing up and uh, how she learns to use her powers, how she finds out exactly what zombies are and how they work and that sort of thing. And there's a bit more detail than we really needed here, so I was kind of thinking, okay, can we get going? And then when that's over, it moves to John and goes into his backstory where he is like a shepherd, uh, but one day his village was attacked by marauders, and his wife died, and then he couldn't cope with it, so he became a drug addict afterwards. And that's also fine, but it also takes a little while, and I'm thinking, okay, we're, we're, we're getting a little more detail than we really need here. I think this would be more effective if it just kind of gave us a few little bits of information and flashbacks. Uh, and then, when that's over, I'm thinking, okay, so we have the two main characters, like the protagonist and the antagonist, are together, let's... Uh, actually go into the story, but no. Then we go to another character named Phasilis, at least I think that's how I'm supposed to say it, and we go over her, her whole story. She's the wife of uh, King Herod, or actually they call him Tetrarch Herod in the book. I believe that was his real title in real life because he was a real person. He was the leader of Judea, uh, but a lot of times he's also called King Herod, so I'm probably going to keep calling him that. Uh, but anyways, uh, Phasilis is his wife, and they're having marital troubles, and she wants children, but he's infertile, and just, th and he's also cheating on her, and there's just, you know, problems going on there, and hers, I'll admit, was even less interesting than the first two, because the first two were at least kinda good, whereas this one just feels like a necessary evil to get to the story, and finally, when Phasilus's bit is done, all three storylines kinda come together, and the actual story begins, and 
once that happens, uh, things get a lot better. Like the, the story becomes much more quick paced and much more fun and I was just more interested in what was going on. But it, it took a while, you know, like that, that's the biggest issue with this book is it takes a while to get going. Because I got uh, partway through for Silas's bit and then I just said, you know what, I'm not interested in this, I'm going to come back to it. And then I like set the book aside, read the entirety of Del Toro Quest, and then came back to it and finally uh, started reading it again. And yeah, w once that happened, when I was able to take a quick break, it got through it much quicker and it was much more enjoyable. But that opening bit is a bit of a slog. One problem that might seem kind of small but really isn't is how Herod, King Herod, and Herodias, or Herodias, I'm not totally sure how to say it, the main villain of the story, their names are way too similar. And that's a bad idea in books in general because, you know, people can get them confused easier. But in this case, it's even worse because most of the time where Herod and Herodias are on screen, they're on screen together and they're talking with each other. So it'll be like, Herodias said that, and then Herodias said that. Wait, did Herod say it or Herodias? Like, it, it's easy to get them mixed up in your head. So, yeah, like, I would say if you're going to have King Herod in here, that's fine. And, you know, keep his name because he was a real person. But Herodias is a fictional character. You could have come up with a better name for her, I think. Like, just a, one that's a little bit different, so it doesn't just literally contain Herod's name in there. It, it just, I don't, I don't know, it's, it sounds like it's not a big deal, but it was very annoying. Now, I will also say that I think the idea of fighting zombies in a time before modern technology is a really cool, really fun idea, and I've been wanting to see that for a while. Like, I, I've been wanting to see, like, medieval knights fight zombies and stuff for a long time, because without firearms and such, you're going to have a much more difficult time uh, breaking open the skulls of a couple hundred or a couple thousand walking corpses. It's, it's going to be difficult for you. Uh, and in fact, I've noticed that in a couple of uh, zombie young adult stories that I've read, like specifically ones where adults turn into zombies and kids don't for whatever reason, like uh, The Enemy and The Rains, I've noticed in those they go to great lengths to try and get rid of firearms from the story or at least minimize firearms impact on the story because, you know, it's just a little bit more intense uh, and a little bit more dangerous if they are not able to just shoot their way out of trouble. And so for that reason, I've really wanted to read something kind of like Jesus Christ Zombie Killer for a while. and. For the most part, that is what they do. You know, they fight zombies using stabs and knives and stuff, and that's really good. That's a lot of fun. But at the same time, they also use magic in the fight against zombies, and that kind of takes away from it. You know, like, because obviously magic does exist in this universe. That's how zombies are created, with necromancy. Uh, and then there's another character who comes in who has this thing called the Light of Apollo, and basically they can use that to, like, either send out beams of light and burn zombies, or they can use it to sort of armor their friends so that basically if you get bitten by a zombie, it, you'll still, you know, get bitten and bleed and stuff, but you won't get infected and turn into one. So just, it, it winds up taking away from the story a little bit, and so we lose out on that whole, okay, they're in an even more desperate situation without firearms. So I was a bit disappointed by that. It's not a huge deal, admittedly, because you know, at the end of the day, it's a zombie story. You kind of know how this is going to go, and there's only so many different ways that you can do it, unless you do something really weird and different with it, like the Reigns did. But nonetheless, it is, it, it, it was disappointing for me. Overall, though, very fun book. I, I liked it. It was a lot of fun. And I do think that most of the issues that I had here, both the issues I brought up and some of the smaller ones, like, uh, for example, there's one or two grammatical errors here, which uh, is a problem, but it's nothing too major. It's just like they forgot to put a space after the after the period at the end of a sentence and stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, I think another draft of the author going through would have fixed that, but she really wouldn't do that, or at least wouldn't be able to do that, because from what I've seen, uh, Camille Picot, or Picote, I'm actually not totally sure how to say it, uh, she is a Amazon self-published author, like all, all of her stuff seems to just be independently done, which is great. I do want to help promote people like that whenever I can. Uh, and she actually hasn't been writing all that long, like, but she already has a bunch of books out. Like her Goodreads page has more than 30 entries on it. And I think what that means is because she's putting out multiple books a year, she doesn't really have time to focus too much on the quality of them. Like she's just pumping them out as quickly as she can 
And uh, because it's self-published, there is a very short turnaround between finishing it and then getting it edited and put out. And I'm not trying to criticize her for this. I think that's actually uh, very impressive because even if you're not the greatest writer in the world, which I want to specify, this, this is a fun book. I think she's a good writer. But uh, even if you're not the greatest in the world, just being able to write that much is a very impressive skill, I think. Like, uh, I believe it was Napoleon Bonaparte who said that quantity has a quality all its own, and <laughs> grant, granted, he was talking about something different, but, you know, either way, it was, it, it's an impressive skill, and so I think that the author just wouldn't be able to uh, do another draft and really spend time on this book to make it as great as it could be, and I don't know, I'm not really working towards a greater point with that, it's just an interesting observation I noted, but, you know, yeah, Jesus Christ, Zombie Killer, Book of John is a pretty fun book, and I think you should check it out if you get the chance. Thanks so, so much to everyone watching, and especially thanks to all of my patrons whose names are here. And the $10 and up patrons are Oppo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Echo, Flax, Great Grebo, Karkat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Madison Lewis Bennett, Marilyn Roxy, Matthew Baudreau, Michael Weingartner, Micaphone, Peep the Toad, Return of Cardamom, Sad Mardigan, Cillier the Vixen, Tom Beanie, and of course, Vevictus. You are all the best. If you want to get your name on here and get early access to videos and vote on other video topics, then consider becoming a patron. If you don't feel like doing that, you can always just tip me on YouTube or become a channel member or even just like the video, comment on it, and subscribe to my channel. Anything helps. It really does mean the world to me. You are all the best, and I'll see you later.